What if I told you that sauropod dinosaurs could be as big as blue whales? Yes, you heard me correctly, and no, this video isn't clickbait. It's an analysis of Paul and Laramendi 2023, a paleontological study calculating the sizes of the largest terrestrial animals known to science. The sauropod dinosaurs dominated the giant herbivore niche for a hundred million years on multiple continents, diversifying into recognizable groups like the Diplodocids, the Macronarians, and the Titanosaurs. The study is titled, Body Mass Estimate of Bruhathkeosaurus and Other Fragmentary Sauropod Remains suggests the largest land animals were about as big as the greatest whales. That is direct and bold, and I appreciate it. Paul and Laramendi sure know how to write a headline. They also know how to estimate the sizes of extinct taxa. They're internationally recognized experts in the subject, in fact, with their 2021 study about Archosaurian specific gravity stunning the paleo community. In this particular groundbreaking study, they tackle what may be the biggest land animal we've ever discovered, Bruhathkeosaurus motlei. So here's the Sparks Notes catch-up for those of you who haven't heard of Bruhathkeosaurus. Giant dinosaur bones discovered in India in the 80s? Maybe a theropod? No. Maybe a tree? No. Disintegrated by floodwaters? Yes. Photographs? Yes! The material's original describers published a new analysis last year, solidifying its status as remnants of a colossal sauropod rather than a piece of petrified tree trunk. The material consists of a tibia, a caudal centrum, the distal portion of an incomplete femur, a radius, and an ilium, which was tentatively reassigned to a theropod. But where Paul and Ayasami failed to provide a size estimate, Paul and Laramendi succeeded. Different Pauls. Let's set the mood with this spicy quote. The results indicate that super sauropods appeared to have rivaled average-sized blue whales in mass, and nearly matching the biggest and rare 200-ton known examples of Balaena terra musculus. And while whales have been truly gigantic for only the last few million years, super sauropods apparently did so continuously, or nearly so, from the late Jurassic to the end of the dinosaur era. Our two heroes reconstructed Bruhathkeosaurus's femur length scaling from other giant sauropods. They utilized tibia to femur scaling ratios based on other sauropods to calculate an updated body mass for Bruhathkeosaurus, as well as other gigantic sauropods like Marapunosaurus and Argentinosaurus. The variables they calculated included tibia length, femur shaft width, and femur distal width. They used this data to calculate femur length, which is a fairly reliable predictor of overall body mass in tetrapods. Mass was then calculated for Bruhathkeosaurus and multiple other sauropods, based on the new specific gravity values for sauropods from La Remedia et al. 2021. These graphs display the linear regression used to calculate the relationship between tibia and femur length. It's remarkably consistent across the major sauropod groups, and even more so when eliminating those with a percent predictive error greater than 10%. Gotta get that accuracy. Paul and La Remedia used two methods to generate mass estimates, scaling from the tibia, and scaling from the reconstructed femur. Each method has pretty different results in terms of what it means for our beloved Bruhathkeosaurus's approximate size, with tibia-based estimates being considerably higher. The femur appears to be much more slender proportionally than the tibia, and there are three possible explanations for this discrepancy. One, the original measurements didn't include the lateral protrusions at the distal end. If that's the case, the femur was actually much larger than reported and would shift up the new mass estimates significantly. Two, the femur actually didn't belong to Bruhathkeosaurus, instead belonging to the large theropod that the ilium probably belonged to. In this scenario, there would be an absurdly massive theropod running around Cretaceous India. The femur is so large that Paul and Laramendi dismiss this idea out of hand, although it's interesting to think about. The funny thing here is that the ilium is actually the holotype of Bruhathkeosaurus, and the surrounding material was originally referred to the taxon that the ilium belonged to. So if the ilium did belong to a different animal, we need to come up with a totally new name for the enormous sauropod we came here today to celebrate. The third possibility is that Bruhathkeosaurus simply had a slender femur compared to its tibia, as seems to be the case for many titanosaurs. This really wouldn't be that strange, and it's the solution that the authors accept. We'll go with that assumption for the rest of the video. Here are the new mass estimates for Big B scaling from tibia length, the first calculation method. Argentinosaurus? 165 tons. Patagotitan, Dreadnoughtus, and Futalankosaurus, 150 to 240 tons, with 240 coming from Patagotitan. That last one should be regarded as an outlier, since Patagotitan's femur tibia length ratio is the highest out of all of the titanosaurs analyzed in the study and likely doesn't represent Bruhathkeosaurus's actual proportions. Apachthosaurus, 120 tons, but Apachthosaurus isn't considered a good analog because it's so much smaller that its proportions were likely quite different. Huaybesaurus, less than 120 tons, but its tibia femur proportions are so extreme that it's considered highly unreliable. It's essentially the opposite extreme of Patagotitan. 
Excluding Patagotitan, the mean body mass based on tibia length is about 165 tons. But what about the mass estimates based on femur length? When using femur length as a predictor, Bruhafkaosaurus's mean mass would be about 125 tons, with a range of 110 to 140 tons. The authors state that when factoring in both methods, we're looking at a range of 110 to 170 tons, with a more plausible conservative range of 110 to 130, if Bruhafkaosaurus did in fact have a proportionally slender femur. The sample size of other giant titanosaurs is very small, so it's possible that its femur was larger or that it was on the higher end of estimates. Of course, these calculations come with their own range of assumptions. We're assuming that the femur on site belonged to Bruhathkaosaurus in the first place, and that its femur was unusually slender. We don't know for sure what its proportions were, but the 110 to 130 ton range serves as a good lower bound for what's plausible. How does that compare to other prehistoric giants? Within this same study, Paul and Laramendi dive into potential competitors for the title of largest land animal ever, performing new GDI analyses for each one. The largest terrestrial mammal, Paleoloxodon nematicus, doesn't even come close at 19 tons. The runner-up for mammals, Paraceratherium, tops out at 17 tons. While those numbers may sound small compared to the kaiju that is Bruhafkaosaurus, remember that the largest African elephant on rigorous record, Jumbo, weighed about 10 tons, with average African elephant males closer to 5 tons. For a point of comparison everyone understands, Dwayne Johnson, according to Google, weighs 118 kilograms. Let's put things into perspective. An average African bull elephant weighs about 44 rocks. Jumbo weighed 84.7 rocks. Paraceratherium weighed at maximum 144 rocks, while Paleoloxodon weighed at maximum 161 rocks. Those animals are absolutely massive, and they're dwarfed by even the conservative estimates for Bruhathkaosaurus. But what about updated calculations for other sauropods in the study? Brontosaurus louisier was 19.3 tons. Dreadnoughtus was 33 tons, Giraffatitan was 35 tons, Patagotitan was 57 tons, the giant Mementosaur was 60 to 80 tons, the Broom Sandstone Footprint Ignogenus may have been 70 to 80 tons, Argentinosaurus was 75 to 80 tons, and Marapunosaurus was 80 to 120 tons. That's a pretty wide size range, with the smallest just above Paleoloxodon and with the largest rivaling Bruhathkaosaurus itself. Marapunosaurus is an animal with quite a storied history of its own. Once known as Amphicelius, it's based on an enormous partial vertebra discovered 150 years ago in Colorado. The actual bone has long since disintegrated, so everything we know about the animal is based on the drawing done by Edward Drinker Cope in 1878. Long considered either a myth, an exaggeration, or a diplodocid, it was reanalyzed by Kenneth Carpenter in 2018 and assigned to the Rabacosauridae, given its unique proportions. It was often glossed over in discussions of giant sauropods given its fragmentary and uncertain nature, but has gained more awareness and cultural traction in the years following its reassignation. Even so, Marapunosaurus's upper bound for size matches the conservative femur-based mean for Bruhathkaosaurus, indicating that the latter is likely the far larger animal. Speaking of fragmentary giants, we can't forget BYU 9024, the colossal cervical vertebra assigned to Barasaurus lentus. As of the time of writing, the placement of the vertebra within Barasaurus's neck is still unknown, which gives a huge range of potential sizes for the animal depending on its position in life. S.V. Powell wrote back in 2019 that the furthest back they thought was plausible for the vertebra was a C11, which would correspond to a 15 meter neck, 48 meter total length, and 66 tons. That's the absolute minimum for the animal, and it's already bigger than half of the giant sauropods that Paul and Laramendi analyzed. If the vertebra in question were a C10, then the BYU monster weighed 77 tons and matched Argentinosaurus. Push it to a C9, you get 96 tons. The furthest plausible anterior position for the vertebra, as discussed by S.V. Pau, is a C8, which would bring the animal's total weight to 130 tons to match Bruhathkaosaurus's conservative upper bound. That's likely an overestimate, but if we take a mean, as much as a mean can be taken when discussing vertebrae, we could reasonably expect BYU 9024 to weigh approximately 92 tons. That corresponds to a C9.5, which obviously doesn't exist, so it's better to say that a range between 77 and 96 tons is likely. With those numbers, it's more likely than not that BYU 9024 outmassed Argentinosaurus and was comparable to the lower range estimates for Marpunosaurus, while still remaining considerably behind Bruhathkaosaurus. While it's true that Argentinosaurus is top dog based on significantly complete remains, it gets demoted to an honorable mention once the three fragmentary giants enter the scene. Let's look at the podium. First place, Bruhathkaosaurus motleyi, conservative range of 110 to 130 tons with a mean of 120 tons. 
this could also be far higher. Second place, we see Marapunosaurus fragilimus, 80 to 120 tons with a mean of 100 tons. Third place, Barosaurus lentus, BYU 9024, 66 to 130 tons with a quote-unquote mean of 92 tons. Bask in that glory for a moment. Let your mind struggle to comprehend all of the records these animals broke just by standing there. Then allow your brain to explode as I read to you this beautiful paragraph from the discussion and conclusion section. The fragmentary and frail when found and then disintegrated fossils of Marapunosaurus and Bruhathkeosaurus indicate that the most colossal land animals may have been in the same size class as the most titanic marine creatures, despite living in 1G with the limb loading and circulatory height issues involved. Paul 1998, 2017a, Walt et al. 2022 discuss how circulatory pressure issues may not be as critical in tall animals as generally thought. Blue whales typically mass 100 to 150 tons, with rare females apparently reaching 200 tons. The evidence that extinct land animals rivaled the biggest living aquatic creatures in maximum size appears to be accumulating. It's not as surprising as it might seem. The modern sample of blue whales is static because it is a very large dataset that has probably captured nearly the full extent of size variation in the species, and will not be further significantly expanded in view of the ban on hunting the now badly depleted population of blues. The far smaller and drastically incomplete sample of titanic sauropod fossils means it is much less likely to contain the actual maximal end of their size range, and the known upper range has a substantial possibility, if not probability, of expanding, along with the fossil record of the group going into the future. It follows that it is possible that the biggest land animals outmassed even the greatest maritime beasts. Did you get the same message from that as I did? Because I heard that A, commonly cited biomechanical limitations on terrestrial animal size may not be nearly as much of a problem as commonly understood, and B, that given our tiny sample size of enormous sauropods and our very large sample size of whales, it is entirely possible, if not probable, that the biggest sauropods outsize the biggest whales. Given the dismal probabilities of animal fossilization, preservation, and discovery, the chances are astronomically low that we've discovered the biggest sauropods. I doubt we've even touched the top 10. So how did they get so big? How can one group of animals not only become massive, but maintain that absurd size throughout tens of millions of years of dramatic evolutionary pressure? Fortunately, Paul and Laramendi have some answers for us. First of all, sauropods seem to have been R-selected species rather than K-selected species. This means that they had large amounts of offspring instead of heavily investing in parental care, taking a shotgun approach to reproduction. This would have created a pyramidal population distribution, with tremendous quantities of young and gradually decreasing numbers in each progressing onto genetic stage, maintaining a stable adult population to continue the cycle. Sauropods also had very robust bones and specialized joint cartilage capable of supporting what were, in essence, walking buildings. The paper hints at respiratory and digestive adaptations that would have allowed them to maintain effective oxygen and nutrient absorption at their size. Their aerobic capacity was disgustingly huge, and they were likely tacky metabolic, so they maintained a high body temperature but were much better at dumping excess heat than large mammals would be. Some sauropods even thrived in cold polar environments, proving their extraordinary resilience to external extremes. Turns out the only things that sauropods didn't excel at were yoga and American Sign Language. In short, sauropods were huge and they spent millions of years becoming evolutionary experts at being huge. The big three, Barosaurus, Marapunosaurus, and Bruhathkeosaurus, combined with population statistics, present a compelling argument for the idea that the largest dinosaurs were at least as large as the blue whale. So the next time someone tells you that the largest animal in history is the extant blue whale, you're armed with the information to push up your glasses, make an irritating snorting noise, and say, actually, maybe not. Thanks for watching! Subscribe for more paleontology content. I mainly cover theropod dinosaurs and marine reptiles with the occasional dip into the sauropod discussion. If your mind is blown by the idea of multiple sauropod species surpassing 100 tons, share this video with your friends. You can also join the VividN Discord server and subreddit with links in the description. I'll see you next time!